and with your spirit. We celebrate today the Feast of St. Patrick, uh, missionary and bishop in the life of the church. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred consumers. Lord Jesus, you come to heal the souls of the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive the sins of the sorrowful. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose the Bishop St. Patrick to preach your glory to the peoples of Ireland, grant through his merits and intercession that those who glory in the name of Christian may never cease to proclaim their wondrous deeds to all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor I answer you, on the day of salvation I help you, and I have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people, to restore the land and allot the desolate heritages, saying to the prisoners, come out, to those in darkness show yourselves, along the ways they shall find pasture, and every bare height shall their pastures be. They shall not hunger or thirst, nor shall the scorching wind or the sun strike them. For he who pities them leads them and guides them besides springs of water. I will cut a road through all my mountains and make my highways level. See, some shall come from afar, others from the north and west, and some from the land of Sa'in. Sing out, O heavens, and rejoice, O earth. Break forth into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and shows mercy to his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget her infant? Be without tenderness for the child of her womb? Even should she forget, I will never forget you. The word of the Lord. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord the Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus answered the Jews, My father is at work until now, so I am at work. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he also called God his own father, making himself equal to God. Jesus answered and said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, a son cannot do anything on his own, but only what he sees the father doing. For what he does, the son will also do. For the father loves the son and shows him everything that he himself does, and he will show him greater work than these, so that you may be amazed. For just as a father raises the dead and gives life, so also does a son give life to whomever he wishes. Nor does the father judge anyone, but he has given all judgment to the son, so that all may honor the son just as they honor the father. Whoever does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life and will not come to condemnation, but has passed from death to life. Amen, amen, I say to you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so also, he gave to the Son the possession of life in himself. And he gave him power to exercise judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, because the hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come out, those who have done good deeds to the resurrection of life. But those who have done wicked deeds to the resurrection of condemnation. I cannot do anything on my own. I judge as I hear, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. So yesterday we had the, the image of the water flowing out of the temple, coming around and moving down into the valley, and uh, how water nourishes the land and, and brings life to the land. And then Jesus, excuse me, the first reading today, um, through the prophet Isaiah, he who pities them leads them and guides them beside springs of water. They shall not hunger or thirst, nor shall the scorching wind or the sun strike them. This person that the Lord is leading into salvation. I just think of uh, r real simple images related to water. One is uh, when I'm pouring water over the, the plants that I've got at my house, how they, that water goes into the soil, but it's really for the sake of the roots that are in the soil. I, I don't care about getting dirt wet. <laughs> that doesn't matter, right? It's about the, the roots in the soil taking in the water and then the water moving through the plant up into the leaves and bringing real life into it. And that it helps the roots then to take the nutrients out of the soil through that osmosis of the water. Likewise, uh, when I drink a glass of water, I know that it's not just simply to have water move through my system to flush things out. It's also so that the water would move into the depths of my cells and really hydrate my person. If nothing else comes out, so be it. It's, it's so that the water goes in and brings the hydration and keeps me alive. And I've, I've seen people who dehydrated <laughs> uh, 
and had to go to the hospital and it's not pleasant, it's not a, not a comfortable way to live. And these are the, the images that we're receiving then related to God in our life. That if, if we do not allow God to soak into our life, we start to dehydrate and die spiritually. And so like a plant who is searching for water to put our roots deep in that longing and searching for Christ. And to see what it is that Jesus is trying to do to nourish us. And this is why it's so amazing how Jesus introduces us to the Father. You know, in most religions that are out there, that idea that God would be close to us, would become a human being and be with us, walking with us, teaching us how to live in the, the first person experience, that doesn't exist. God is always some being out there who kind of tells us what to do and you just have to fall in line in all of those other religions. But for us, ours is a religion of a revelation this God who does love us and want to be close to us. I think of, uh, I just saw on my drive over here this morning, there was a mom standing outside of one of the, was it either an eye clinic or a dentist office or something like that, and just holding her kid, you know? The kid looked like the kid was just like, I don't want to go <laughs> into the either dentist or to the eye doctor, whatever it was. And the kid, you know, just mom holding the kid, and the kid was probably five, six years old, should be standing on their own. But the, the child has a familiarity with that consolation place, a closeness to the mother. What was it right at the end there? Um, Zion says, the Lord has forsaken me, my Lord has forgotten me. But then the response is, can a mother forget her infant? Be without tenderness for the child in her womb. Even if she forget, I will never forget you. And so you get that flavor from Isaiah. Now here is Jesus introducing us to this intimacy of the Father that you hear him talking in the Gospel of John. The Son cannot do anything on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For what he does, the Son will also do. The Father loves the Son and shows him everything that he himself does. And he will show greater works than these so that you may be amazed. And indeed, the whole life of Jesus on earth is this introduction into a closeness with the Father. Come close, all you who are weary and find life burdensome. Come to me and I will show you rest. Uh, it's like waters springing forth within the Son of Man for those who thirst. And so we're introduced into this depth of intimacy. It's always been a marvel to me related with the Mass, that when we're praying the Mass, it doesn't get any closer here on earth than, than what we experience in the Mass. Jesus inviting you and I to participate in the Last Supper. It's not, we're not just having a memorial. Oh, remember the time of the Last Supper. Remember, remember what that was like when Jesus took the cup and said all this stuff. Like, no. When I go to a play, yeah, I'm being shown something from time of old that somebody else wrote. But what doesn't happen at the play is where I'm brought out of the crowd and sat down and said, here's your line. Now speak your line. But that's what happens when we celebrate the Mass. We aren't just participants in some uh, play that's happening in front of us. We're invited into the mystery. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. So we enter into the Last Supper. We're there. We're present. We enter into the moment of the cross and the resurrection. You know that moment when the, 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 the priest does the fraction right? You know, we're all saying, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, Lamb of God. And he breaks the host. That's the brokenness of Jesus' body on the cross. And then he takes the host, the little fragment, 
and he puts it into the consecrated wine, now into the blood of Jesus. Do you know what that's supposed to symbolize? It's the resurrection. Because when you die, what happens to all of your blood? It goes out of the body. And in the resurrection, the life blood reunites with the body. So here, the body and the blood are reunited in that little moment of the fragment being dropped into at the chalice. So you have the, the full mystery, the paschal mystery of Christ being revealed to us, this intimacy and relationship to the Father. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, he says on the cross. And he offers the very sacrifice of himself from the Last Supper into death and into resurrection that we can have communion and go to heaven where he's waiting and he's inviting us and this is a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. It's really beautiful what we celebrate together. So run your roots deep. Long for the waters of Christ. Enter into communion with him and see what he shows us of the Father. We'll stand and bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. We pray for the Christian church throughout the world that we might be united together as one body of believers in the Holy Eucharist soon. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for our government officials, pray for those parts of the world where there's turmoil and strife between people and government, that the government might be a source of service to the life of their people and bringing about the dignity and good of all persons. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those who are sick, Pray for an end to the pandemic. Pray for something of a return of normalcy of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear we pray for those who have died and gone before us in faith. We pray for Frank Lawrence and for the next person from our community whom the Lord will call to himself. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear Heavenly Father, we ask that you would hear all of these prayers. We ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, on the offerings we set up on this sacred altar on the feast day of Blessed Patrick, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as in the festival of St. Patrick you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Donald our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, you 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. It was, <clears throat> it was not you who chose me, says the Lord, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last.
Let us pray. Renewed by the sacred mysteries, we humbly pray, O Lord, that following the example of Blessed Patrick, we may strive to profess what he believed and to practice what he taught through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Bow your head for the blessing. May your servants be shielded, O Lord, by the protection of your loving kindness, that doing what is good in this world, they may reach you their highest good, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.